All right, this is lecture 1.3 of um, week one's material from the Monte Carlo methods. This is about rational arithmetic, example three. So far we've been dealing with integers, and integers are just a type in SAGE. Algebraically speaking, integers, rational numbers, and real numbers form a ring. And if you don't know what a ring is, then and you're curious, you can look at this link. and It'll take you to Wikipedia link on rings. If you don't know what a ring is, don't worry about it for this course. This is something you'll learn in a maths course in group theory or abstract algebra. First, let's find the data type of 1. Okay, so you type, you ask what is the type of 1? by evaluating this expression and it tells you the type is a sage rings integer integer however life with only integers is a bit limited what about values like one half or one over two and this brings us to the rational numbers so if you ask what is the type of one over two the data type of one over two is a sage rings rational rational so sage is very clever it's able to use the form of the expression in the numbers to determine its type. Now try evaluating the cell containing 1 over 2 plus 2 below. So when you add 1 half to 2 you get 5 halves as a rational number. You can modify the expression and evaluate it again. Let's try 1 over 3 plus 2 over 4 like that, hit shift return, you get 5 over 6. So that's how you can do rational addition in SAGE. And here is an example of subtracting 3 quarter from 1 quarter, you get 1 half and multiplying half by itself, half by half is 1 quarter. And we can do division of rational numbers as well. 2 fifths divided by 1 fifths is simply 2. Exponentiating rationals is similar. This is 1 half raised to the power of 3, and that's 1 eighth. Now is a good time to pause this video and do the U try on your own. So please follow all the instructions in a U try and play around and familiarize yourself with rational arithmetic operations in SAGE. The next example is example 4, and this is on real arithmetic. So recall that real numbers include integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers like the square root of 2, pi, and the Euler's constant e. Real numbers can be thought of as all the numbers in the real line between negative infinity and positive infinity and real numbers are represented in decimal format. For example, 234.4677878 is an example of a real number. We can do arithmetic with real numbers and can combine them with integer and rational types in SAGE. Compare the results of evaluating the expressions below to the equivalent expressions using rationals above. So early on we added 1 over 2 plus 2 instead of adding 1 over 2 plus 2, now we add 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 2. So and then we get 2.5. Okay, so similarly 0 0.75 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.25, and 2.5 divided by 5 divided by 0 0.2 is simply 2. Once again, exponentiating is similar. 0 0.5 raised to the power of 3 is 1.25. Now, if you ask Sage, what is the type of 0 0.2? What is the data type of 0 0.2? It'll tell you that the type is a Sage rings real MPFR real literal. MPFR stands for multi-precision floating point real. And a technical note here is that computers can be made to do exactly, to, can be made to exactly compute an integer on rational arithmetic 
but because computers have finite memory they cannot represent the uncountably infinitely many real numbers in memory and they can only mimic or approximate uh, arithmetic over real numbers using the finitely many computer representable floating point numbers. So if you've not taken a course in analysis, what is the uncountably infinitely many real numbers mean? Well, you can follow this link and catch up or just think of it as way too many numbers that simply cannot be stored in computer memory. Therefore, we have to use floating point numbers. So this is how machines represent real numbers inside in memory and there are various IEEE standards that make arithmetic with these floating point numbers be quite close to real arithmetic with exact real numbers. We will not bother too much with the details in this course just remember that under the hood when you do operations with these decimal numbers you actually are getting an approximation. So now is a good time to pause the video and go through these set a few tries. Example 5 is about assignment and variables. In Sage, the symbol equals to is the assignment operator. You can assign a numerical value to a variable in Sage using the assignment operator. This is a good way to store values you want to use or modify later. If you've programmed before using a language like C or C++ or Java, you will see that Sage is a bit different because in Sage you don't have to say what type of value is going to be assigned to the variable. So that makes things easier. So in this expression, the first line says a equals 1 and the comment says we are assigning 1 to a variable named a. And the second line just has a. So all we do when we evaluate it is to assign 1 to the variable named a and by simply calling a we are disclosing the contents of a. So a is 1. So it simply outputs the value we just assigned to a. Just typing the name of a variable to get the value works in the Sage notebook. But if you're writing a program and you want to output the value of a variable, you'll probably want to use something like the print command. So now we are assigning 2 to b in the first line and 3 to c. And finally, in the third line, we're printing a, b, and c. And note that we are separating the a, b, and c by a comma. So if I hit shift enter, we simply get the output 1, 2, 3. Remember that a is still in machine memory because we declared a upstairs in the previous cell. So the computer remembers that a is actually assigned um, the value 1. Variables can be strings as well as numbers. Anything you put inside quote marks, quotation marks, will be treated as a string by Sage. So here we are assigning a string called this is a string, it's between quotation marks, to the variable named my str. Okay, and the next line. Um, is my str. We're simply disclosing what it is. Remember that this second line is actually just part of this comment. So if I make the cell smaller, for example, right here, my str is this is a string. Okay, so and if I shift enter, I get my str as output, which is the string called this is a string. Now let's make it bigger again. Now if I ask what is the type of my SDR, then it'll tell me this is a type SDR. So it is simply a type string. So the variable my SDR was assigned a string and when you ask what is its type, it simply says it is the type string. So you can 
reassign different values to variable names. Using Sage, you can also change the type of the values assigned to the variable. So not all programming languages allow you to do this. So here, a equals 1. And then we are simply having a long print statement. So print is here. And we are printing this whole string, followed by a, which has been assigned 1. And then we put a comma. And then we are printing another string. And we're, we're finally printing the type of A. Right? So once again, if A is 1 third, and we are reassigning 1 third to the variable A. Remember, earlier A was assigned the integer 1. And now we are printing now A equals A, and it's of type, type A. So if we evaluate this, it looks as follows. Right now, a is 1 and is of type integer. And the next line says, now a is 1 third and is of type sage rings rational. So have a play around with this. Just remember that um, the same variable can be reassigned different types. Now we're assigning an expression to f. So f equals this entire expression. And we're simply disclosing f. Similarly, now we are assigning x the value 2 raised to the power of 1 half. We are printing x. And the next print statement simply prints x with some digits of precision. And if you want, you can have 30 digits of precision. And this is the 30 digits of precision using multi-precision floating point reals. And this is nothing but the 30 digits of square root of 2. You can assign values to more than one variable on the same line by separating the assignment expressions with a semicolon. So here is. Um, an example, so we're assigning s to 1, semicolon, uh, 2 to t, and 3 to u. And we're simply printing the sum of those three, which is 6. Now, in SAID, it's quite easy to get more digits of precision than you really have the time to look at. So if I want the first 1,000 digits of the square root of 2, of uh, square root of Two, then I can simply increase the number of um, digits that I demand from Sage. Now please go through the U tries. This is a very good time to pause the video and play around with these U tries to familiarize yourself with everything we have covered up to now.